Megan, we got Rudo coming to you live uh, with working mics and everything. Uh, the Avs beat the Minnesota Wild 5-2 to two tonight off of, well, maybe the best game I've ever watched Jonathan Drew in play, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's start with the 60-second rundown. Uh, the Avs really played a very, very good first period. They actually won a first period for the first time in what feels like a long time. Uh, Eustace does give up one goal that you don't love in the first, but the Avs ultimately get two of their own one from some hard work from Arturi Lekkinen, and then one really a Kale car shot that was probably going in anyway, but drew and bats it out of midair to finish it. Uh, the second period actually started very strong for Colorado. I think they came out and played very well. They get rewarded with a goal from drew to make it two. And then they get into some discipline trouble. A whole slew of penalties costs Colorado, makes it a 3-2 game. But they're able to hang on to the lead. As we said in the pregame, they play the full game essentially with the lead or tied. They never trail. Uh, and some critical depth, not depth goals, but insurance goals. One from Nathan McKinnon, and then Miko Rantanen hits the empty netter for your 5-2 final. Uh, we always seem to start with uh, the guy in goal. Let's start with him again. You in. Good, bad. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Do I have to hold it? Yeah. That... Well, I don't know. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Just touch the Well, I was like holding it in there. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Eustace Annan has a bit of a bounce back game from the loss in Columbus. Not that I thought he played terribly in Columbus, but not good enough. Tonight, he gives up only two goals. Certainly the the five-on-three power play one, it's hard to fault him too much for. Made some big saves. I, I still don't know where the conversation is with Eustace. Is this just a continued quality performance from a backup goaltender? Is that as far as we're willing to go? That's only as far as I'd go for right now. Okay. But I think we can punctuate a quality performance because it is still a high volume game from Minnesota with four penalty kills inside that second period frame to include that five on three in which it had just expired and he made some pretty big saves and they still had the man advantage in Minnesota and he couldn't fully stave it off, but it was impressive because especially what Minnesota did inside the second period, the high danger opportunities favored Minnesota at the end of this game, especially because of the four penalty power play opportunities yeah. that they were afforded but that's a lot of traffic in between the hash marks for Eustace on and in to defend against. And I think that 44 saves on 46 shots is a really impressive performance, especially with some of the top end talent that Minnesota boasts. You know, Yoel Erickson Eck was giving him trouble all night. And some of the big saves that he made at the very end of that five on three before the goal against are against some of those sharp shooters like Yoel Erickson Eck yep. and Matt Zuccarello. Um, I, I thought it was awesome. It's an A plus for me. Um, he was in control. He wasn't sliding everywhere. He he's he's very technical, but he's also a good athlete. Again, like I compare him to Vasilevsky all the time. I'm not saying he's going to be as good as Vas. I'm saying it's rare that you're that tall and that big and then so technical. So it's pretty cool to watch. I thought he made key saves. Yeah, I didn't like the first goal, like we talked about, but that's fine. I I don't care if he gave up a goal. Like it's just the rest of the game, you better be on your toes. And he was, he was arguably in the top three, four players for the avalanche. And here's how I'm going to look at it with him, or with any goalie till the end of the year is I'm going to simplify it. How about that? We just say, was he better than the guy at the other end from him? The answer is yes. In last game, the answer was no. So now, if you're better than the guy, if you're bad, it just mano a mano, like be better than the guy down the down the hall from you, right? You know what I mean? Yep. And then, again, he was. Gustafson, I don't think, was very good. 
the first. I mean, I didn't. I, didn't, I thought he was fighting it. It could have been six one after one period for the Avs. So I didn't think he was very good. Um, but Eustace, he passed the test. It's a big one. Um, it looked like they were going to run away with it, and obviously the the penalties got you know got him busy in the second period, and then he answered the bell. So it's a it's a great job by him tonight. Uh, it, it makes. Georgiev be pushed a little bit, and then we'll see how he answers the ball tomorrow. Uh, look, we say two or less every night for a goaltender, right? You can't ask for more, right? Annan did that, as Megan said, makes 44 saves. There you go. He watched a guy make 45 saves in Columbus on the other end of the there ice, right? So he says, hey, you know what? Maybe I can do that. Career too. night. Career night. Yep. Save-wise. Yeah, I, I don't think he's really even come close to that number of saves in the NHL. I mean, the abs are rarely give up 40 shots. That's <laughs> true. Oh, they've hey, good point. Uh, we talked about this a little bit in the pregame. I wanted to get into this conversation about the abs third line. Because on one hand, really one of the abs best possession lines on the night. Uh, Colton particularly led the abs in, in possession metrics, 17-4, only 10 attempts against. But you continue to run into the problem of them being unable to put the puck in the back of the net. It's not for lack of opportunity. Parise had some great chances. Wood had some great chances tonight. Puck's just not going in for him. Wood now 22 games without a goal. Is this lack of depth finish, particularly from the third line, something that's starting to creep in as a problem? Or is this fine? You're okay with this if they play good possession hockey. For sure. They had had some rough games. And I think that's what makes me more comfortable with the performance from the third line tonight okay. compared to what it was previously, just because even proportionate to their time on ice, they allowed very few chances against. And so they were very reliable defensively. That has to be the strength of that line. I go back to what brought the Avs depth success in the playoffs in the 2022 year. And it was the shutdown identity of the third and fourth lines. And so that has to be there, especially at this point in the year. I don't want to see them stray from that any further. And they've had to deal with some changes to what that line has looked like throughout the course of the year. So I won't come down on them too hard. You know, Parise is a new addition yeah. following the All-Star break. So there's been some growing pains there. Um, the lack of finish is frustrating, but I, I want to give credit for the things that they drastically improved on in this game. And that was Ross Colton being a lot stronger on the draws. Yep. Um, that was another thing that was sort of harming that line and their sure. possession opportunities. And then the other thing is some of those players between a combination of Parise and Wood in a game where some of their penalty killers were in the box stepped up on the PK too. So it's really hard for me to come down hard on that line when they contributed in other important ways. And that will sort of be my evaluation of them moving forward is are they contributing in other ways, if not production? Sure. I'd like to see that come, especially from one of Colton or Wood. It's getting really frustrating to watch Wood on the doorstep of opportunities. I think it's like we've seen with other players, including Jonathan Durant earlier yep. this year. It will come. It stinks that we're talking about this with six more games left to go down the stretch. But as long as those other things that I just gave them credit for continue to be good... I can live with it as long as I see the effort there too. And there was an effort from each of those players to create tonight that I can live more comfortably with what it was moving forward. If it looks like that. Would like, I'm going to talk on, on his behalf for a second. Like he, 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 he is snake bin. You're right. You know, like I see Chad talking about this, um, so he is getting chances. You know, that's the good thing. You know what I mean? If you if you nitpick your game, if you look at your game, um, if you're going out there and you get no chances, I'll tell you one thing, it's not fun. You know what I mean? Now, I'll speak as a player right now. To be honest with you, you go into 20-plus games without a goal, it starts affecting you. It does. It just does. It's Everybody's a human being. Everybody's knows how to look at a score sheet after every game and know that you're not helping out. So um, they were producing when it was LOC and Colton and, you know, Wood. Now LOC's gone. Been a while. Um, 
So they kind of dropped off since LOC has been gone. Right. So it, it's, it, sure. I mean, it's, it don't oh, now at that, at, on the same mark, like I said to you, I saw his face tonight a couple times after the whistle camera on him. <laughs> and you're just like, wow. You know what I mean? Like this is on wheel. And AJ says all the time, oh, this guy's going to be stuck at nine forever. Like, I'm telling you, it it just wears on you, and it does as a player. I feel bad for him. And here's what I would say to him: If I was right next to him, I'd be like, "Hey, how about you just simplify everything? Any scoring chance you got, you know what I'm going to say? Just shoot the puck five hole. That's it, okay? And it's either going to go in, it's going to trickle in. You're going to miss it. It's going to go top shelf. It's going to miss it. It's going to go whatever, lower blocker. I'm not bashing him. I'm saying that's what you got to do." You gotta, you gotta simplify your game. You gotta stop at the net. You have your stick down. So he, you know, he is so fast that he's always gonna get chances because he's so fast. There's nobody fast like. I mean, it, it, it's a rocket. He is a rocket. And people are like, "Well, he can't finish." No, I know he'd be making ten million bucks a year if he could finish because he's got something special, which is his speed. Nobody else has that speed. So I feel bad. In a sense, but he, he's going to break through. And this is a guy that's going to break through in the playoffs or whatever, when, when it's needed right now in a 5-2 game. Who cares? Yeah, it's ultimately, okay. I have very few problems with this. You know, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm just saying, but I feel like is it it just wears on you. Like, I, I'm telling you, I went through it. At 18 with 20 to go, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to get 20. Yeah, I went bagels over 20. And then the first round of the playoffs, <laughs> I, went zero. I think I went to like 29 games. And it's hard because it's it just creeps up in your head, creeps up in your in your practice, it creeps, and it's just like, uh, you know what I mean? Like you just want to get it out of you know, get it out of the way, you know what I mean? And then I just, I'm not worried about the, the that he's getting chances. I've just, for me, it would be like, hey, buddy, just simplify it. Like today, he tried to you know almost do the fourth word or whatever, just. Okay. You know what I mean? Just just shoot it. Just shoot it, shoot five ball, and then crash it and crash and bang and because he's fun to watch. I want to expand that conversation out to the rest of the abs a little bit too. And yeah. I know this is a weird conversation to have on a night when the abs scored five goals, yeah. but does it feel like the abs are a little bit in their own heads when it comes to shooting right now? And, and unless your name is Nathan McKinnon or Jonathan Druin, you look at Miko Ranton and shooting attempts tonight. Whole bunch of great A chances, a lot of missed nets. Mm -hmm. One of them does hit a post, and obviously he gets the empty netter. You look at a Kale McCarr, nearly gets a goal tonight. Drew and finishes it. A whole lot of shots are right to the goalie's chest. A couple of games where they've only scored one goal. I'm not saying they won't come out of it. I'm sure they will. But is that part, is mental the biggest part of it? Or is it more just their own execution? I think it's mental related to the Columbus game because their shot selection was the issue there. They walk away, what, 45, 46 shots yep. out of that game and thought they deserved a better fate. Yeah, I think that got in their head specifically in this game because on the whole in the month of March, the shooting has been up, but the goal scoring has actually followed it too. So I don't think it's going to remain a continued issue for the Avs. I think Columbus got in their heads a little bit. And it, it showed in this game, but getting five is another way to help them Definitely work through that. Definitely breaks them out a bit, for sure. Yeah, I mean, and <sighs> goal scorers are streaky, too. I mean, they just are. You know what I mean? And and as a team, they've been streaky. Remember the start of the year, those shut out three times in four games, yeah, five yeah. games, and all of a sudden then they erupted, and what do they have, the second most goals in the league right now? Yeah, it, I mean, it, <laughs> you again, know what I mean? yeah, big picture. No, I know. Not I even know. a little. No, bit no, right I, I know, but I'm like, with yeah, you. I'm with but. you. It creeps up on you, and then you just gotta, you know, believe it or not, like you feel better in practice. You know, I'm telling you, you just kind of like, okay, today I'm gonna hit the net in practice, and then you just kind of, you know, and yeah. then you feel it, and then you're like, okay, it's coming, and then you know, in the next game you're gonna hit it. You know what I mean? And you do. So those are just. Again, they scored five, thank God. You know, imagine that. They scored zero, it'd be like, oh, my God. You know, Problem. Uh -uh. This is like, <laughs> this, is ah, <laughs> this is great. This is, I mean, this is, it's going to be fine, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I would have liked Miko to, you know, like, I, I, again, here's what I'm going to say. You don't score 50 by shooting wide. <laughs> so this guy scores 50, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, there'll be games that he's shooting wide. Like today, he just... The gun was crooked. Like it wasn't the like it wasn't was going. Crooked. You know what I mean? Like it's just like trust me, sometimes you just feel like it's just like the way it is. You're like, God, I can't believe I just missed it again. 
because he went like four times. Even Kale. Like, Kale was the opposite tonight. He's getting the grade A chances. He's shooting right in the freaking whatever logo the wild is. You know, whatever that logo is. Yep. The, the woods or whatever it's, it is. It's like a bear, but it's also like nature. It's nature. Yeah. I'm not bashing. I'm saying, well, I'm just. I'm bashing. It. No, I, 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 I never remember. I just never <laughs> I understood love it. it. Like, that's what the, I mean. The, I think I see trees and the stuff. The problem I have with it is that it's yeah. backwards. The bear should be facing the other way. There's a bear in the logo? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really? kind of the overall shape is the bear head. Wow. And then inside the head is like streams. All right. Well, we'll have to look at it after. <laughs> I wanted I to expand on your yeah, point, though, Rudo, because it is bigger than Columbus. And tonight I look back at the Pittsburgh game, too, yep. which was a closer game and really relied on the abs depth. And I think that's another example of this time of year. Other teams are coming really prepared for what the Avs are going to bring. They're coming with a game plan that is designed to contain the Avs. And by this point in the season, people are very aware of what makes the Avs dangerous. Mm -hmm. I think that could be said all year, but it feels like right now a lot of things are ramping up. Yeah. And that includes the teams on the other side. And I feel like that has shown through really well-prepared teams that have met the Avs in this last couple of games. And I think that has come with a lot of blocked chances. And I think that has hurt their mental just ever so slightly because some of the skilled plays that they would usually go for that work haven't worked as easily as they might have earlier in the year because teams are better prepared for what the abs are going to try to bring. And, you know, as evidence tonight, the abs can still overcome that. But I do think that is also what we've seen over this last stretch with some of the toughness in the, the accuracy and the goal scoring for the abs. Here's what I like tonight, though. I saw a lot of shooting mentality from Kale, for example, which was awesome. Ends up, whatever, would have gone in that, like you said. But Druin gets it in, and even Middlestad is, like, swinging at it. They're, like, so it's baseball season. Both of them. <laughs> it like, is hey, baseball. Rocky's opening, opening day, day tomorrow, day whatever. Colorado, yeah. So they were, like, yeah, going at it. So it was. it's kind of nice to see that they're – they got a little bit of a shooting mentality, and then and that's how you grease it up a little bit. Because I don't care what people say, I don't care what people read into. In ten days, it's a totally different season. It's totally different to manufacture goals. You got to be able to manufacture dirty goals. Um, the Abs did it two years ago, you know, and they won the cup. So if you think it's gonna be just rosy and nicey and Yay, and like, you know, wow, what a play. Of course, you're going to see some spectacular plays. But at the end of the day, you got to be able to buckle up your chin strap, drive and get down to that freaking pizza hut, and then just, you know, grease it up and muck it up because that's where goals are going to come from. And I feel that tonight, Druin got it right there on the second one, you know. Yep. And the first one, he's, you know, they're both in there, like I said. So go goal by goal. What's the other one? Mac, I mean, that's, again, that's, that's what I'm trying McKinnon's gonna score those goals. It's unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable transition from a good defensive play. Next thing you know, the puck's in the net because it's, he, he's a rocket ship. Like it's it's wrong. So then all of a sudden, then you have an empty netter, and then I'm missing one. Like I, I don't. Remember. Lucky's first. Lucky's first. One. Lucky goal. Ego, he's right there. He's that's Pizza Hut territory. You're right there again. We'll, I think we'll it's a bad goal. I'm just saying. I think it's a bad goal. It goalie, is, but you put pucks on net. That's what that's what happens. Yep. So all right, grease it up. On that note, uh, we One are. Sec, can well, I show you? Oh, yeah, look. Can you see the bear now? Holy schneiskies. They've been around this league forever. I never <laughs> forget seeing it. <laughs> Shit. This was important to show to you. I wanted to make sure that we saw I the see it. <laughs> I've always said, look, whatever that is, remember I said that, the trees. I see the trees. <laughs> I've always felt like, yep. I always felt those trees. I knew that. It took, it took me years to figure it out, too, because it's backwards. If the bear was facing to the right, I'd have seen it immediately. Well, it's like FedEx. So wait, why is it backwards? How is it? The, so the it bear just, the bear, bear should be looking the other way. Like, if you flipped it, I think people would recognize that it's a bear a lot more. Oh. I honestly, I mean, I've because you read, never seen like, it now. most people look at things left to right, right? And so... It's weird because you see the front side of the bear and you're thinking it's not a bear. It's just trees. So you see trees. Oh, wow. But if you read it the other way, like you'll realize that it's a and bear And the white face. parts the river, right? Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's a pretty cool logo. All right, I take it back. <laughs> it, I do really like it. I take it back. I like their <laughs> colors. I've always liked it. I've always, I, I, I just knew there was trees. That's all I knew. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> It's like it's like FedEx. I know I know there was a freaking arrow in the middle of it. No, I can't not not see it. 
Well, look, do you understand what I'm saying? I, no, I see it. I know. You, once you see it, you, you'll it's never that just stuck. Yeah, no, I know arrow. the arrow. I'm man, like, man. no, I'm driving. I was like, I can't get it. I was like, I have no idea. If you're planning on going off-roading out in the Minnesota Wild logo, make sure you get yourself a Toyota. Uh, your Front Range Toyota stores are excited to begin our new partnership here with DNVR. Toyota is the f- official vehicle of DNVR. Whether you're conquering off-road trails or hauling the weight of the world, there's a Toyota truck that's right for you, like the all-new 2024 Tacoma and the return of the iconic 2024 Land Cruiser. Uh, they also have a the highest number, in fact, of uh, electric or hybrid vehicles in the class. There's 16 different hybrid vehicles to choose from, including the iForce Max hybrid truck. Uh, get yourself a Toyota, again, at your local Toyota Front Range dealerships today. Uh, visit them and go to either Auto Nation Toyota Arapaho in Centennial, Corwin Toyota in Boulder, Groove Toyota in Littleton, Mountain States Toyota in Denver, Stevenson Toyota East in Aurora, Stevenson Toyota West in Lakewood. Uh, go check it out. Get with Toyota, the official vehicle of the Colorado Avalanche and the official vehicle of DNVR. And once you've got yourself a Toyota, you're going to want to get over to Lavello Construction. Lavello specializes in all things roofing, gutters, siding, and paint for your home here in the Front Range. We have storm season coming up. Reports, I, I live out east, so it might not be as bad for you guys, but out east we have reports that this weekend winds could reach 100 miles what? an hour this weekend yeah. so uh yeah you're gonna want to make sure your house is uh well put together you might want to you might want to make sure there's a there's good things going on or if after the fact you have problems lavello can come out and get everything all fixed up for you lavello prides themselves on transparent communication and an honest assessment of your home's exterior you can scan that qr code on screen or call 303-578-8551 to get your quote in under a minute It'll be quicker than the Avs denting the Stanley Cup trophy. Uh, <laughs> second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. Let's get into our three stars here because I, I think you could make an argument for a number of guys in this third star spot. And then certainly could have been one of them. But I went with the guy who scored the first goal, Arturi Lekkanen. Not because of his amazing skill, not because he scored the goal. Like you said, honestly, I think it's a pretty soft goal from (laughs) Gustafsson, but because after that Columbus game, after these lulls from the avalanche, I think Leckie as much as anyone on the abs embodied, Hey, just put your head down, go do the hard work, go do the little things, right? Guess what? You win a game five, two, when a guy like that sticks to the smart game plan, gets the job done by going to pizza hut. It's a coach's dream. That's why guys like that can do the right things in the regular season and be so valuable in the playoffs because they 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 play the same way. They elevate their game. This guy elevates his game, um, and then he's able to do all his assignments the same way uh, without being all over the place. So he's a coach's dream. Uh, you love to have a guy like that. You look down. If you ask Ben, he would tell you right now. You're on the bench. You look down, and you got, oh, 62 like and You're like, oh, you feel good. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, right, lucky you're up next, and you can actually take a breather because you know. <laughs> reliable. Yeah. Everything's going to be reliable. Everything Everything's going to be fine. And then he brings that sense of calmness, but he's also brings that little combative, like, uh, you know, warrior type, you know, just want to go to bat with him, you know. Yep. So he's been awesome. He was one of the biggest defensive forwards on the kill tonight, which yep. was tested largely. And obviously it, went, it wasn't perfect, but he wasn't to blame there. And since he returned from injury, he's had 11 goals and nine assists and has been a pretty steady contributor to come back from the the nature of the injury that he had and just continue producing at that pace and yep. being moved throughout the lineup. Like he didn't return and just immediately assume a second line role for every game. It's sort of fluctuated a little bit. Has. And I think that's really impressive how steady and reliable he is just as a player, generally speaking. I think like Eric is saying, that's something that Jared Bednar really values about him and is sorely missed as an option when Logan O'Connor isn't in the lineup. Those hard workers become that much more important. And I, you know, there's been a lot of conversation about the abs with and without Val Nachushkin. And and part of the reason I still believe in the Avs top six without Val is because of Arturi Lekkinen, who can fill a lot of the similar roles. And, you know, I'm not saying he's has the 
tip game that Val does. He's not quite as a gigantic human being as Val, but he does a lot of similar things, working along the boards, doing the hard work, finding rebounds, things like that. And with Lecky specifically, you mentioned it. Bednar loves to throw him over on the top line. If Druin's having a bad night, something like that, he'll move him around the lineup. And particularly with Nichushkin out, you're looking at Lekin and, and Middlestat to really carry that second line because the guy on the other wing, on any given shift, it could be Duhame, it could be Parise, it could be anyone over there. So they, Lecky has to play well for them in the top six without a Nuchushkin, and obviously he did so tonight. So wanted to give him some props there. Good uh, call. Number two, Nathan McKinnon with a three-point night, keeping up with... Uh, Kucherov at the top of the list. By the way, McKinnon gets real points. He didn't get any empty net yeah. points in this oh. one. So, just saying. Just saying. Uh, McKinnon continues to be incredible, but really, uh, we can just show the first star, too, because I want to talk about the homies together, because uh, our number one star is Jonathan Druin, and these two together were just electric tonight. Uh, Druin, on his own, was electric. We'll talk about him, too, but the two of them combined. Honestly, if you're Jonathan Druin, I get it. I, I understand down in deep inside that Jonathan Druin has priced himself out of Colorado. But you have a game like tonight. You look across and you think, I am I get to play next to Nathan McKinnon and I have awesome games next to this guy. Can he talk himself into staying? I loved his post-game comments. That girl of sports posted something like, I'm in the right spot. <laughs> And I think that he's not blind to a lot of the comments around what his next contract and future outlook looks like. Sure. And that is not him by any means saying, I belong here, so I'm going to do whatever it takes to stay here past this season. <laughs> I might be reading into that too much, but <laughs> with the talent that he has been surrounded with, an opportunity that he had to earn too, it obviously was not granted to him. You look at the first 10 games in Colorado, and how far he has come. He had to fight through some adversity. For sure. And some third, fourth line minutes, some healthy scratch moments to get top line minutes. And so he fought through it. He endured it. And he became a better two-way player at the end of it all. And has been awarded then the opportunity to play with the likes of Mika Rantanen and Nathan McKinnon. And now he's just two points away from matching his career high in yep. his 10th NHL season. I think it's such a resurgence in his game. And I was looking to, like, I want to give the Halifax homies credit for what they've done together, but yes. I also want to give Druin credit for what he's done on his mm -hmm. own. Mm -hmm. So I was looking, mm -hmm. and so far the numbers I have is Druin has assisted on eight of Nathan McKinnon's 48 goals. McKinnon has assisted on 11 of Druin's 17 goals, and they combine for assists on seven additional goals with other players, which means that 26 of Druin's assists and 32 of his points came independent of McKinnon. Yep. And I just wanted to highlight that we talk about how much he's probably incentivized to want to see in Colorado and continue playing with McKinnon, but he has done so well in his own right too because of how Colorado likes to play hockey. I think they've just For surrounded sure. him with the best possible environment to thrive in. And I don't know if it's realistic to hope there's a future in Colorado past this season, but I love what he has been able to do this year. I'm really proud of him. I, I want to take that even a step further because yes, the points are awesome. I'm super happy for Drew and I love it. He's doing great. But the reality is if you're playing on a top line, you have to produce what has impressed me even more than that is his intelligence as a hockey player and his ability to read the play defensively. This is a guy who has stepped into the avalanche top six and found a defensive side to his game that preseason I had surmised, Hey, you know what? He had one pretty good defensive year in Tampa Bay early on in his career. He really hadn't been any good defensively since then. He has surpassed any reasonable expectation of his ability to play two way hockey in Colorado. And it goes a really, really long way in Colorado. If you can do that, particularly when you're playing next to guys like McKinnon and Ranton and allowing them to activate even more. Here's what I'm going to say. I was very skeptical. I saw that move this summer and I was, I was one of those guys. I was like, yikes. Yeah. No, nope, don't like it. Um, it's proved me wrong and, and that's okay. It's awesome. I'm not the Messiah. Like I'm, I'm not, <laughs> uh, but 
his game has changed tremendously. I've never liked his game. No, I love his game. Yeah. I do. I think it's built for playoffs. I think he's going to have success in the playoffs. Here's what I'm going to say, and I'm reading the chat and everything, and people are like, oh, someone's going to overpay him. Guys, this is a guy that was making five, six million bucks a year for the last six years in the NHL. Like, this is not, he wasn't making 800 grand last year. Yeah. This guy's made money. I'm not saying he's not going to not take money. Alan Walsh's agent is a very intelligent man and, and does what's best for his clients. And you can say what you want about Alan Walsh, but he has his client's best interests at heart. He does. Jonathan Druin is a totally different uh, stage of his career than a guy that's making 800 that's coming in and it's 23 years old. This is a guy that's had a lot of issues. He had the money. He was in the wrong spot. It didn't work out well. He had 15 point seasons, 20 point seasons. It was, it was atrocious. It was bad. He is in the right spot right now. I don't know what the number is sure. to make you feel that you're worth it, but you're also in the right place. And and you've already made, I'm not saying that you shouldn't make more money. It's not what I'm saying. So let's not misconstrue what I'm trying to say. But there's a lot of factors here coming up in the next seven to eight weeks with playoffs and Gabe's health. And there's a lot of factors that are going to, you know, of course, like like Chris said the other day, he can't keep everybody. He can't. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to trade some. It's just, I'm just saying, let's, you know, Make them make decisions, right? We always say that about guys in try in training camp. You know, same thing with with this case. You know, let it play itself out. We'll see what the number is going to be, and we'll see that if it can be done and if it fits. You know, I I would say this, and this is speculation on my part. Don't take this as as fact yeah. or anything. Just so we're clear. But Jonathan Druin certainly is someone who should be more in tune with his mental health, I would say, than most hockey players are. Not that hockey players aren't, but Jonathan Druin has clearly been through more than that than a lot of guys have. And someone with that experience probably understands the importance of playing in a place where you feel comfortable. Yes. More than a, than a guy. If, if you're trying to talk yourself into it, I can see how Jonathan Druin could be a guy who's less concerned about the money. Now, I, he, I, that could be completely untrue. Druin could say, I'm getting as much money as possible this offseason. I don't know. Awesome. But hopefully. But 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 he had the money. It didn't go well. Like, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and I'm not could, sure. I'll also try him at center. There were a lot of things no, going that's on what, there. That's but, what I'm trying to say. No, if you, I'm not saying the money did that to him. I'm no, saying, for, sure, you, I'm, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm saying the same thing as you. And that's why it's is a different case. And you have to be happy in your own skin. And I remember seeing him in training camp, talking to him. I am from Montreal. It is a tough freaking place to play <laughs> if you're from there. If you're Arthur E. Lekkonen and you can't speak French and you don't understand. Not it, quite as bad. Good. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Joel Armia can play there and yeah. it doesn't matter. Go 30 games without a goal. Nobody he won't know. He's still going to drive. And <laughs> he happy. scores great against the Evs. When you're from there, it is a tough place to play. Now, I'm from there. 93. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Your legends, yeah. You are legends. Like it is again, it's a great place to play when you win. It's a tough place to play when you don't win. And and when if you're from there, it's just it's just different over there. It's the it's the pressure of being from there and 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 not just the media, but the fans, everybody. And he struck he was in the wrong place. That's what I'm trying to say. And I'm think you're saying the same thing. Yeah. Here he's in the right place. He's seeing that it's in the right place. He is feeling good about himself mentally, physically. He is thriving. So what is the amount of money that keeps you in that frame of mind? I, I don't know what it is. If it's four or less, I'm doing it. I'll that, tell you that, that right I'm, now. I, I don't know. And, and, and that's where I'm saying Alan Walsh knows that too. Because he's been through it. He's very in tune with his clients. And it has not been easy the last five years with Jonathan as his, as his agent. And, and, and when I say I'm not blaming Jonathan, I'm saying it was tough. Yep. It was tough to go through it. So if there's one guy that's in tune with all that stuff, I think it's him. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I didn't want to forget about Nathan McKinnon either. 
Uh, he did get two assists tonight. That scrub. <laughs> yeah, just a bum three point night, <laughs> leading the Avs by like thirty points. No big deal. But also, with eighty two assists on the season, now just four assists away from the Avalanche assist single season record. So six games left. We may when this season is said and done, Nathan McKinnon might just have all of the record. He's not going to get to the goal record. Miko's still going to have that one, but. Uh, for years, we've talked about how truly good this core has the ability and has been. Obviously, they won a cup, but you're seeing it start to show up at the top of, top of the record books. You're seeing it start to show up about the conversations of greatest abs of all time. Is McKinnon all the way there yet? No, but he's certainly getting there. Eric, I know you're the old guy. Oh, I McKinnon on the Mount Rushmore for the abs. Well, he's got to be right. He's got to be. <laughs> Again, I'm always for the old guys, but he's got to be. I mean, this is, again, we're, we're witnessing something special here. And I say it every day with, with him. Again, look at Miko tonight. I mean, I'm just, <laughs> Miko, Miko, you guys got 100 points. I mean, are you serious? Like, <laughs> scored a goal tonight, technically. I'm just saying, you know, and then you got Kale, and, you know, it, it's it's special. It, it, it is, it, he's got to be up there. He's he, We're witnessing something. And then you show some emotion tonight when he scored that goal. He was pumped. Yeah. I think he was pumped more because it was a big goal. It was a weird game. As you don't touch the ice much in the second period. There's a lot of PK. And then you come up with a big play. And then Drew and his buddy gives him a nice pass. It was awesome. It was a great play. It's a playoff play. You know what I mean? And if you if you come up with those plays in the playoffs, they're game changers. And tonight that play just kind of settled the game back down. And you know, and then after that was over. Yep. But yeah, he certainly deserves to be there. He's been outstanding. You're witnessing greatness right now. Okay. Uh, those are our three stars for the game tonight and chat. You got us over 100 likes, so we appreciate y'all a ton. We got some Dr. Dubs winner shots here for you. Uh, we appreciate it. You guys are always showing out for us. So thank you very much. These are cute. Yeah. It's like, I don't look like beakers. <laughs> We drinking potions now? Is that what? <laughs> We're casting spells. <laughs> we need to cast one to cure Miles Wood. To cure Miles curse. Or you must choose cure Miles Wood or keep Jonathan Druin. Uh, sorry, Miles. You gotta <laughs> go, buddy. <laughs> sorry, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, if you're not a fan of the hard stuff, but you still like yourself some beer, get the beer made to chill. Coors Light, the beer for you. Felt like the Avs had a Coors Light in that third period. McKinnon scored that goal. They go up 4-2. They get to chill out a little bit as uh, they know they have Edmonton tomorrow. So go grab yourself some. Maybe go grab yourself some when the Avs take too many penalties so you can relax a little bit with a Coors Light. It's the beer literally made to chill. The mountains turn blue. In fact, you don't even have to go get it. You can get it brought to you. CoorsLight.com slash DNVR. Sponsored with Instacart can bring beer right to your front door. You barely even have to get up off the couch to chill with Coors Light. Go hit them up. Use that CoorsLight.com slash DNVR to let them know we sent you over there. Uh, of course, they're brewed here locally in Golden, Colorado. We uh, we love them over here. The beer literally made it to chill. Go check them out. Please drink responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. CoorsLight.com slash DNVR. And then make sure if you're going to the game, which the Avs do have one more big homestand coming up this season. Use game time, $20 off with code at DNVR for your first purchase at a game time. And you're guaranteed the best prices at game time, whether you get the last minute ticket deals, whether you use the section selector to get a average of 18% off. And even if you find tickets cheaper somewhere else, if you do find that game time will reimburse you 110% of the ticket price. So get your tickets through game time can be anywhere in the country too. It doesn't have to be abs at ball arena, whatever the game might be. Maybe you're trying to be like Eric and go to the frozen four here over in Minnesota and get <laughs> your tickets cool. through game time. Should be a, should be a fun BUDU yes. series. Great, great final four. Exciting stuff right there. Uh, go check it out. Go get your tickets with game time. Join over 15 million people using the game time app to get their tickets. Third period of the DNVR avalanche podcast. I kind of skirted around the one real concern I have in this game, and that being the Avs' discipline in the second period. Mm. And I don't really have a problem with the power play. You put yourself in a five-on-three, technically they don't score on it until after whatever. But 
Is everyone else missing Trennan as much as I am? <laughs> Watching Cogliano take those penalty kill face offs. Okay, Joe, that was scary. <laughs> but, like, they're lucky to have come out of it just one power play goal <laughs> against. It, it was rough, man. It, it's nothing against Cogliano. He, he's not on this team to take face offs. It just ended up in that situation. Who's but... missing him? I mean, Bednar. Yeah, I bet he is. I he's bet already he fell is. in love with him. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you have to. As a coach, you, those are the guys you love. You love guys. Not that you don't like McKinnon. McC- That's not what I'm saying. But those are situational guys, you know, like Trennan, Duane, uh, you know. LOC, you know what I mean? Yep. It's it's what it is. Like Comfort was one of those guys for him, you know. So you fall in love with those guys and you know, because they give you what you ask of them. And you know, think about that one tomorrow night. If you got Trennan and Val in the lineup, be awesome. Yeah. You know, and I think as a coach, you're like, wow, this is nice. I was saying when you look down now, you're like, okay. Your lineup card looks good. You feel good about it. And then you're like, oh, all right. The PK, <laughs> oh, all right. Got a lot better right now. <laughs> no offense to Cogs or whatever, but, you know, taking a draw and all that kind of stuff. So I think the abs are deep. Uh, you, they're missing a couple guys right now. So I think you see those guys will make a big difference. It makes a big difference in the lineup. Well, just to back up that point, Bednar clearly doesn't trust them at five on five either. Uh, that fourth line, Barely played. I mean, and I, I know they got some time on uh, the penalty kill, but yeah. Cogliano, only six minutes at five on five. Chris Wagner, only seven minutes at five on five. Kivi Ronta, only seven minutes at five on five. And and for a guy like Kivi Ronta, who doesn't really play a ton of PK time either as yeah. the 12th forward in this situation, it's, it's impressive how quickly someone like a Trennan has made such a big impact in the abs depth. I'll put it that way. Going beyond just the face-offs, which he's weirdly good at during penalty kills. So, <laughs> oh yeah, it's fun. It's fun to think that the Avs have pieces in place that they will have a better lineup than they did tonight, and they were still able to take care of business. Yep. So, did want to bring that up about Trennan. Uh, I don't know. I. I'm not particularly worried big picture about the, the discipline issue, but is, are, are there any thoughts on stacking up penalties that the Evs did in that second period? There's no bigger concerns beyond this game, but it is annoying. Like to see For sure. that's the correct word. A penalty yeah. on the power play. Yep. And then to lose two important penalty killers in Walker and Gerard when they take penalties. Yep. Yeah. It's Eric's no nos, I'm sure. <laughs> a, without knowing nice. all of right. them. Those yeah. feel like big no nos. Hey, uh, my only concern, I agree with you, you know, when you pile them up like that, that close, like, Avs are in total control this, this morning. Feels Good. like this morning. Whatever. That was a long game. In the first period, Avs total control, penalties. Took the momentum away from them. Yeah. McKinnon doesn't see the ice. Uh, you know, Miko doesn't see the ice. We saw that on the, you know, when he came out of the box, why? Uh, and when they got <laughs> scored on. But uh, it just changes the, the the flow of a game. And and that the the wild was not really functioning. Yeah, I mean, they, they weren't was, getting much. The first half of that sudden, second period. Yeah. Exactly. Now you got guys like Capri Sub. Now you're feeling the puck. You're, you're touching the puck. You're getting chances. You're dancing. You're like, all right, I am awesome. You know what I mean? And then it changes the game. So you got to be careful in any game in the National Hockey, but especially in the playoffs. You got to be careful. That's my concern a little bit there. When that comes around, you got to nip it in the bud. Like, so you hear guys on the bench all the time, too, after, hey, that's enough now. All right, watch our sticks, watch our sticks. And you know, and we can call it. And that's why I'd like to have yeah. Jax here. I'm calling him out, but <laughs> we'll, we'll call him. But, you know, like, you, you can almost feel it, like, oh, oh, the power play is coming because then they have you're you're the best at it. You always say it. And you're all like, oh no, they're not calling anything against the app. So you I can, hate it. But you can uh, yeah. feel it. You know when you're like, watch your sticks now because it, you know it's our turn. It's their turn, and you know. So it'd be interesting to see. But when you pile them up like that, it just changes the complexity of a game. And tonight it did. 
it, it, particularly the timing of it mm -hmm. in tonight's game where the abs are on a power play and you feel like if they score here, this game's probably over. And when I say, I'm not saying negatively, I'm saying exactly. Yeah. It would have been like a five, six, seven, one win. Yeah. Now instead you're in some sort of a dog fight. You, you don't know just I mean? cancel out your own power play. You take another penalty and make it a five, five on, on three. three and, and all of a sudden you're yeah. right back in a hockey game. It's yeah. it, you get away with stuff like that against a team like Minnesota. Like in the playoffs, ooh, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause you do have Yusuf Sanin in a net, yep. and that doesn't set him up for success or not. any goaltender, really. And you're lucky then that it happens against a competitor like Minnesota in a regular season game to yep. have a stretch. Because I think Minnesota did put forth a pretty competitive oh, they push, for e sure. effort tonight. So it's not nothing. And it just made things a little bit more challenging for their rookie goaltender, who yep. was not technically one of our three stars, but it's because he was a superstar. There we go. There it is. And an exactly. transcending the three stars. <laughs> he's, he's the superstar. He's that star in the Minnesota Wild logo. That's, <laughs> that's good. That's, that's really good. good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and again, it, the Avs as a whole continue to be a very good team even if they have nights like they did against Columbus at any moment, anyone on this team is talented enough to, to help the abs break through in the right direction, whether that be defensively making plays. We haven't even mentioned Josh Manson tonight, who was a wild man, the entire game monster. He was awesome. <laughs> or Anna then making 44 saves a night and not even getting in the three scars. It, it, the abs have all of these options. It's just a matter of consistently getting what you need out of them as, as a whole, not just getting all oh, what you need out of the forwards, not all oh, what you need out of the defense. Oh, what do you need out of the goalie? You have to put all of the pieces together to be successful in the playoffs, which while we are still going down the stretch and the other trying to win the central division, you're lying to yourself. If you don't think these teams aren't starting to keep at least one eye on the playoff matchups mm. at this point. So everybody knows when, uh, as Eric put it, the new season starts. Oh, that's going to be fun. <laughs> Uh, yeah, beyond that, Miko with the empty netter makes me hit my parlay tonight. So thank you, Miko. I appreciate that. Plus 260 on that one. Easy money. Sometimes you should bet with me. Sometimes you shouldn't. That's how it goes. <laughs> that, but that looked good tonight. It really looked good. It, it Before the game, it, it worked, looked good yeah. and it worked, yeah. Miko was Miko was trying to throw it away, but yeah. <laughs> but it worked. Uh, I don't, I really don't have a, a whole lot else to say here, but I want to get a couple of your guys' thoughts before we move on to super chats and things like that. I'm reading Final. about, I'm just reading about the game tomorrow. Yeah. Like some people are saying like the, the flight, Hey, listen, it's a long flight. Like <laughs> you got this big dude. I mean, it's, it's a pain in your butt. Mammonton, many to Edmonton is a tough back to back. It just is because people don't realize like you, <laughs> You have to get out of the rink. You have to meet the press. You have to do this. You have to do that. Then you get on the freaking uh, uh, on the bus, and you have to get on the tarmac. Yes, you don't have to go through like you know the regular folks. I'm talking about like a DIA or whatever, or you know a regular airport, and you know be at, at the gate an hour and a half before whatever. I'm sure you're like 20 minutes before because you, you like to be last second. But I'm kidding. <laughs> but I'm just saying. I no. I but do. it just still takes time it, it still takes time. and then you get there and then yes you don't have to go through the regular airport in edmonton but you still have to deal with freaking customs, customs. Yeah. you still have to deal with getting on the bus the drive from the edmonton airport to the hotel is 40 minutes just that okay <laughs> then you have to get out grab your room key it's a long night it is a long night. You're in bed at three in the morning, four in the morning. Like, I'm just being oh, so honest. Like normal for me. <laughs> it's a very normal day for you. Not for me. That's when I wake up. But so it's a long night. Now, I tell you all the time, I'm not building an excuse for tomorrow. You're usually the better team on a back-to-back -back because you just played the night. I'm just telling you, it's easy to play. It's if the game goes your way. It's an easier game to play. Now, if the game gets into a dogfight, we saw it in L.A. at the start of the year. Remember, we were like, oh, my God, that's a schedule loss. But they were doing awesome, awesome, and then they ran out of gas. So I'm not worried about tomorrow. I'm worried about Sunday. Yeah. Because you're coming back, and it's 8-15 start, and then you're playing Dallas. It's a big game. Three and four is tough. Tomorrow, I'm not worried about it. They'll be up to the task and going to bed at 3 a.m. like Rudo. Rudo does it every day. He's a big <laughs> man. And then he comes 
ready to go in the next day. So the Avs will be ready tomorrow. I'm not an NHL hockey player, so a little oh, bit tougher yeah. for them than for me. But <laughs> yeah. All right. Fair enough. Any any other thoughts, Megan, on this game? No, it cool. is a, it is a cool game for Nathan McKinnon. He hits the 130 mark. Yeah. And there's still six games left in this season for him to continue making that number grow. It's pretty special special company that he's joined. It, again, I I really don't know if we'll ever see another season like this in an Avalanche jersey. There's definitely that possibility. So enjoy it for the last six games that it's happening. Uh, and maybe go throw a couple of bets on it with Bet365 or McKinnon to win the heart on Bet365. Sign up with Bet365 today and use code DNVR365 when you do. You bet $5 on any NHL game and get $150 in bonus bets with that DNVR365 code. You can use that QR code on screen right there to get the Bet365 app and get all signed up. Whatever it is you want to bet on. You don't have to bet on the end. Did the Nuggets win? I don't know. I didn't keep up with the game during the show. It's still going. Oof, man, long night for them. They're not going to be in bed till 3 a.m. Uh, okay, so it's a basketball game. Uh, <laughs> go with Bet365. Maybe good, the Nuggets might be good money to go bet right now if you want. Uh, go jump on it. Uh, of course, you must be 21 or older, physically located in Colorado. And if you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER today. Yeah, that's my, my style is just woke up look. That's how I, that's been my style for my whole life. Uh, also, if you're looking to be responsible with your money, hit up Premier Members Credit Union. They're not a bank, they're a credit union, so they give you a ton of different options for how to use your money. Uh, tons of different ways you can save money, including uh, their 5% APY on your first $2,000 with a reverse tier money market, or their new high yield savings account. Go check those out. Go get with PMCU. They're just here to be part of the community and try and make your money work for you. So go get with them. When you become a new member at PMCU today, you'll get $200 just for opening opening a checking, a checking account even and sign up for e-statements. That's all you got to do. If you sign up for those e-statements with your account, you get 200 bucks. This will be your best money move yet. Head to becomepremier.com to find out more. Uh, okay, I think we have a couple of super chats and then we'll wrap this thing up. $10 from K. When Druin, whether Druin stays or not, as someone who's been a fan of his for years, I'm just happy for him. I've heard he's a great guy. People were talking about him having to go to the KHL last summer. Yeah. I, well, it came close. I mean, look, Druin certainly has not taken the normal path to, to NHL success, right? Especially for a guy's third overall pick, very highly touted. Had some very promising early years and then had the, uh, the lull that Eric talked about in his career in Montreal. But when you see guys like that have years like this, I think everyone just has to feel great for the person himself. So super happy for Druin. Kay, I know, has followed Druin for forever and is a big Montreal fan, so really knows the ins and outs of that Druin situation. Uh, so thank you very much for the $10. $2 from James, who says, Eric, who's your four all-time abs? Well, it's easy for me. I'm going to go psychic Forsberg Wah just because of their longevity and their, their success. Yeah. And then you, you got to put McKinnon now because of the amount yeah. of year and then the cup. And then I didn't, I don't have kale in there because not he'll, enough years. He'll get yet. there. He'll yeah. get there. You know, if but if you're asking me today, um, you know, again, I'm biased to, to Joe and Peter and just because I, I had lived it, I saw it day in and day out. Those guys were, were productive. Ooh. Who's your number five then? Who did McKinnon bump off? <laughs> yeah, I mean, God, I feel like we already been used four of it. So but it's been great. It's been great here, you know. Like, well, but but they weren't here long enough. Like like Ray or Blake here. You know, yeah, those are I don't all the famers. So. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That, but they're not like to answer the question. It's not. But I, I mean, Kale's got to be knocking on the door now. I mean, he's got to be. And then Miko has to be, you know I mean? Like um, at some point. Well, it's before the rise of this core, the fourth guy, AJ and I. Oh, Gabe's got to be there. Jesus, I, he's close. I know, I know. If he comes back, if he doesn't come back, I don't think he makes it. But right. it was it was Hayduke or Foot was oh, the fourth God, guy. I forgot about my two buddies. God. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Great call, buddy. I'm tired. Oh, I, need, I need a Red Bull. I mean, it doesn't matter now because it's McKinnon's spot. But oh, f- yeah, Footy and Hedgy are right there. You're yeah. right. Yeah. I forgot. I'll... Guys have been so good here, man. I should know their jerseys and the rafters. Um, my admit, yeah. I mean, that's they're right there. But he asked me for four, so here you go. Yeah, he, yeah. Get the cop out this time. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Mac knocks off like Footy and Hedgy. You know what I mean? He just does. All right now, who's your grinder? Mount Rushmore. You like yourself? No, 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 no. Corby. <laughs> no, no, not close. I, I if I'm gonna go purely on like pure grit and like warrior and forget about the amount of years that he was here. Sure. Dead Marsh. Okay. Yeah. Dead Marsh. Megan would take L O C for sure. Yeah. I'm does anyone else on the Evs? Bottom six right now. Start to make an argument for like a the grinder Mount Rushmore. Mm, I think it's too soon. Yeah, no cogs just for leadership he's, purposes. He's close because okay. just the role in the cup run, the yeah. memorable phone call <laughs> that helped rally the troops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lappy, it's a good one too, Lappy. Again. Those are all he my could, buddies. He could throw Lappy hands for sure. No, oh, he's a warrior. Like it's a good call right <laughs> there. You know, <laughs> Mike Keen. Mike Keen should be up there. You know, and then people are gonna say Mike Ricci. You know what I mean? Like you know, I, again, there's been some greats here, grinder wise, and you know, Cody no, McLeod, yeah. great one. You know, yeah, um, he's not making it. Sorry, all right, that's yeah. fine. LFC, LFC all day. Yeah. Uh, Dermy, yeah, <laughs> Dermy made it. I don't even think Dermy makes the fighter Mount Rushmore in Colorado. Oh, stop it. Not that not that he's not a good fighter, but the Avs he's... have had a weird amount of really good fighters. Yeah, Yeller's a good one too. I guess so. between That's Parker, awesome. Worrell, Chris Simon, Bordalo, like a lot of fighters have come through Colorado. Lots of love for Hey Duke there. Lots of love. He's right there. <laughs> I think he got bumped off by McKinnon, which is not a bad thing. All right, we're gonna get out of here before we go any further off the rails but uh we do appreciate all y'all hanging out with us for this victory uh we'll be back for the back-to-back tomorrow uh so you know same channel yeah actual watch along tomorrow too for the edmonton game so hopefully the abs make it a good one uh we appreciate y'all and we will catch you on the next one Like the mayor, 